Both of these movies were released in 2006, only a few weeks apart. So it's really difficult to determine who copied off of who. A rookie racer is on the verge of becoming the best driver that's ever lived. And the only thing that stands in his way is his own ego. During the first race in the movie, we learn the main character's pit crew is the laughing stock of NASCAR. They don't communicate and even when they do, they're not on the same page. The driver does whatever he wants and completely ignores the crew chief. Despite ignoring directions, the driver constantly manages to get all the way from last place and leapfrog everyone in front of him during the race. You could tell he has the potential to be great, but he's too reckless at times. He does this slingshot move where he uses another car in the track to catapult himself all the way to the front of the race. The signature move works for him, but all the cars behind him wreck out. He also has another dangerous signature move where he drives backwards, which is cool to watch, but sucks if you're one of the safe drivers driving next to him. The racer's fans and the media egg on his ego and likes it when he acts immature on camera. In this sport, the more disrespectful you are, the more endorsements you get. Not only does the racer disrespect his teammates and sponsors, but he has a disrespectful taste in music and doesn't respect the classics. Turn that off right now! Oh. No one plays jazz here at the pit stop, okay? Will you turn that disrespectful junk off? Respect the classics, man. Also, the groupies love the famous racer. There's a scene where a groupie flashes her headlights at the driver after the race, and you could tell by the look on his face, he loves his life. What sucks is that the groupies don't really give a damn about the driver, but only care about his popularity because as soon as his career spirals downward, the groupie dumps him and moves on to one of his rivals. But anyways, the racer suffers an accident on the track and after the race, he disappears off the face of the earth. During his hiatus, Doc keeps a close eye on him. I'll keep an eye on him. Well, thanks, Doc. Thanks, Doc, for taking care of our boy here. He turns in his life of stardom in front of the flashing lights in exchange for a secluded lifestyle in a small town. While he's missing in action, he gets super pissed because he's worried his biggest rival who drives the green car will steal all of his endorsements. In an ironic twist of fate, the professional driver gets in trouble with the law because he can't drive. And that's when he officially hits rock bottom. Everything happens for a reason though. Because of this, he's able to link up with a former racer. He's a real racing legend. He's the fabulous Hudson Hornet. I am a semi-professional race car driver and an amateur tattoo artist. The former racer takes him under his wing to mentor him and make him a better driver than before. He gives him some advice and for the first time in the movie, the main racer follows instructions from someone other than himself. What sucks is that the advice sucked and the racer ends up with scratches and dirt all over him. To be honest, most of the advice the mentor gives him doesn't make any sense at all and at times it seems like he's pushing his own agenda. To get some better advice on what he should do next, the racer seeks counsel from his best friend. My best friend. You're my best friend! You're my best friend! Later on, just when the main character starts getting used to things in the small town, the mentor sells him out and makes a phone call snitching about where the racer is hiding. So I taped a kilo of cocaine underneath the car and called the boys in blue. You got about two minutes before they show up and you do five to ten. Thanks for the call. He's about to race again and before his last race, his pit crew gives him a makeover complete with new parts and a clean paint job. This is great because this car needs to be in tip top shape to face his toughest obstacle yet. He'll be facing one of the best drivers in the sport. The driver also announced that this will be his last race earlier in the movie, so the crowd is on his side and wants to see a fairy tale storybook ending. Everyone tunes in to watch the race on TV or drive to the track to watch it live. There's even a few cameos at the track from legendary sports icons. Absolutely, Mr. Andretti. Folks, I'm here with one of the great NBA superstars, a real legend, Larry Bird. When the race starts, one of the drivers isn't thinking straight and keeps daydreaming about previous scenes in the movie, which causes him to fall to third place. That's what I'm saying, my hair's all tied up like... When the main driver's mentor arrives to the race, he takes it up a notch and moves from last place all the way up to first. On the last lap, there's a nasty car wreck and the crowd is silent, but everyone starts cheering again when the two drivers have to break the rules to cross the finish line. Pushing on the last lap legal? It was completely illegal and no way we'll cap it. Man, that was something. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so. If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. Mm.